The math wrangler is each day we would give them a couple problems and we'd set them into teams. And then at the end of each week, each team would take turns presenting problems and they'd challenge each other. Hey, we challenge you to present something on this problem. Let's start the second math wrangle for the summer camp 2015. Navajo Nation Math Circle Project. Born for Water is here to defend their championship. Monster Slayers is coming in ready to take that championship <laughs> away. Wishing. Wishing. <laughs> I'm going to ask Charmaine. Woo! You are going no. to call heads or tails while it's in the air. Call it. Heads. And the coin toss is heads. Are you going to challenge or are you going to receive a challenge? You're going to receive the challenge. <laughs> Which one don't we don't like? Which one's six? But how are we going to rebuttal them? Yeah, we don't have anything on them, so they can just get all the points. Well, other yeah. than that, the next thing, well, they're going to have to challenge us next, right? And it'll yeah. be any of the ones that we already Yeah, with that one to be right Yeah, okay, okay, so just better get rid of it now. Yeah, get rid of it now, right? Yeah. Six. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, we have a challenge. We challenged them to six. <laughs> We accept it. What? We accept. We accept. So you had to use this formula to find these numbers, that's what I used to find these numbers. And that's how I used these numbers to substitute in for N. That's how I got these here. Well, math wrangle is a great new type of competitions, at least new for this country. It combines everything, it's a theatrical performance, strategic game, team working, solving difficult problems, presenting problems to, to the audience, listening to some, someone else presenting a problem and criticizing someone else presenting. Okay, for the for number one, the question is how many spatial diagonals does a buckyball have? And the buckyball is made out of a shape called the icosahedron. For this shape, we have 20 faces, 12 vertices, and 90 edges. First, we have to solve, we have to get the number of faces, vertices, and edges for the buckyball. So the way we do that is we have we um, added 20 plus 12, which is the faces plus the vertices, because when you do, when you cut off, when, how you make it is you cut off the um, vertices of the icosahedron. And so for every vertex, that becomes into a shape, a uh, face. That forms a face, and the rest of it is a face as well. So that's how we got 32 for our face. And for the vertices, we took the number of vertices right here and we multiplied it by five because five triangles meet at every vertex of the icosahedron. We multiplied the number of hexagons by the number of edges it has, which is 20 times, 60, 20 times 6 equals 120. Then we did the same thing for the pentagons, 12 times the number of edges it has, five. 60, and then we add it together, which is 180, and we divided it by two because for every edge, two shapes come together to make an edge. So we're just counting it twice, so we divide it by two, and that's 90. After that, this is the solution for the spatial, non-spatial, and the edges of the buckyball, and it's only asking for the spatial. The way we got the non-spatial is we multiplied 
the number of hexagons by the diagonals on the hexagon, which is 180. Then we did the same for the pentagon. That's 60. We added it together. That's um, 240. And then that's 1,440. This is a creature whose diagonals they were counting. How many things, how many diagonals can go inside of this thing? And this got a right answer. The answer is exactly right. 1,440 diagonals. Math wrangle at the last day is something rather special to watch. It's uh, really nice. It's, it's, it's amazing to see the students presenting mathematics at the level that they present it, at the problems that they present. Okay, so number four, it says a box contained 31 chocolates. Uh, the first day, Susan ate three-fourths of the number Jacqueline ate. The second day, Susan ate two-thirds of the number Jacqueline ate that day and the chocolates were all gone. How many chocolates did Susan eat? Since she ate three-fourths of the first day of what Jacqueline ate, mm -hmm. you know that what in, in is has to be a multiple of four, because other than that, it's gonna go into fractions. So if we try like for multiple of four, if we add that up, that's gonna be too low of a number to get to 31. So that can't work. It'll have to be higher multiples of four and three. And this equals the 30 because that is three-fourths of that and that is two-thirds of that. And so Susan would have eaten 13 and Jacqueline would be the other half. Okay. Yeah, thanks. And that's time. After the first team presented, uh, the next team could rebut and say, well, you say that, but what about this point and this point? Was this right? And uh, Brandon is going to prepare to rebut. You have three minutes starting now. Jacqueline with BJ, Susan with BS. Jacqueline for day one would be X, and Susan for day one would be Y. For that, I got this fraction. For day one, Y equals 3 fourth times X. Q equals two thirds times Z. Susan ate 12 chocolates, so Jacqueline had to eat nine, because three fourths of 12 is nine. And for the second day, Susan ate six chocolates, so Jacqueline ate four chocolates, because two thirds of six is four, so that's how I got that, 31. And thank you. Then the judges could say, look at them and say, well, maybe this is right, or hey, have you thought about this or this? And in, so, in fact, in the wrangle, either team or the judges could get points. First, I have to let you in on uh, uh, the secret on the judges. Uh, the decisions are hard, and in fact, they're, they've been split decisions uh, in both cases. Uh, namely, uh, different factions support different things. <laughs> and um, so we just had to make a choice. Uh, we feel that Brandon uh, had a, uh, a, a systematic solution that uh, took away uh, some points. So uh, we argued about it uh, a bit, and we're going to allow him to take two of the points uh, away, but from the uh, solution over there, uh, from Monster Slayer. Uh, Several things we noted. This was a, a fairly systematic uh, solution. Uh, in particular, it, the claim was made there were no other solutions. The same thing was true with this one. One thing that neither solution cons allowed was the possibility of zero. That is to say, there was nothing in the statement of the problem that prevented uh, uh, nothing to be eaten on one day. But other than that, uh, they were both uh, nice solutions. And I was very impressed with the students being willing to get up and try to poke holes in each other's arguments and to just add to the general mathematical excitement. It's not a, um, here's how you perform computations. Instead, it's, um, here's how you can think about ideas in a very natural manner.
Start from here. Come up from right here. Come right here. Oh yeah. We don't want to eat the block because it has to eat the whole thing because we don't want to eat the center first. So we skipped it and went to the top. And when it hits right here, it can eat down, bottom, there. So it eats everything, even including the center, the last part. If the corners are odd and this one's even, you can eat to the center straight through it. But you have to make sure it has to find a way down so you won't say. So it won't be trapped because you don't want to trap it. So yeah, thanks. This. You can go in a swirl, swirl, and then go back out, swirl, swirl. Go down the middle, exactly what Jamie said. And yeah, there is multiple answers, but the question is that if, that you is that is it possible to get from any corner to the center? And that's exactly true. So I would say yes, it's true. Is that it? One way in mathematics to show that something is possible is to exhibit ex it explicitly, and we feel that this path uh, does that uh, explicitly. You know, boom, there it is. As Albert admitted this is a path, and so doing that shows that it's possible. So we feel that Monster Slayer should get seven points. Last year we played, I think the judges won, but this year um, the kids definitely won. They, they had really excellent um, proofs and discussions and were really, um, they really practiced hard to present too. They were giving each other good pointers. So it also was a pretty good um, team builder. So teams eventually really recognized that they were teams and kids started working together and that was great and they were helping each other and teaching each other and that's exactly what we wanted to have happened. Like really bonding with other people and then helping, like others help you out. You just don't have one answer. There's more answers, more ways to find the answers. And it's, it's better to communicate with others so you can work out something easier. Honestly, what you learn at math camp, you, in, you can apply to anything in everyday life, even the littlest of things.